Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Matt. This is my channel. And this video is about that giant wall mounted Scrabble board and a shuffleboard table. Two things that I made last minute for a charity auction. And so I'll take you through the process of building them. And, uh, and then you'll see them get auctioned off at the end and see what actually somebody paid for them. So uh, it's 12 gauge steel wall mounted solid maple letters. Uh, here's the shuffleboard table. The shuffleboard is uh, it's pretty legit. It's two inch thick maple uh, with epoxy inlay and a walnut uh, box gutter whatever you want to call it with a uh, acoustical felt lining it so uh, both items turn out really good and like i said i'll take you through it the auction took place in the mcleod center so there i am with the table after delivering it and so it was part of the live auction the shuffleboard table was uh, so it was auctioned off live there's an auctioneer there so like i said i'll show you at the end the scrabble board was part of a silent auction it was a ton of fun uh, should be a good video so let's get started uh, I drew up the, the Scrabble board in SketchUp. Pretty simple design. I just had, there was going to be no decals or marking on it. So anything that it needed to be on there was actually cut into it. So all those word and letter scores are just perforations that would be cut out. So this thing is 48 inches by 48 inches, so four foot square. And I kind of wanted to see how big that would be and model it because I model everything. So it uh, looked good. So I was excited about it. So the first thing I did was export that uh, SketchUp drawing into like a CAD DXF or something like that. Uh, something usable for my friends over at American Steel that they could cut this on their uh, plasma cutter, which is really similar to my CNC, but it just obviously uses a laser to uh, cut it out. So it just goes through and, and runs the program. I didn't stick around and watch the whole thing. I think it took over two hours to go through and cut that out. And you can kind of see it just plodding along off of that drawing. So pretty cool. Meanwhile, I am trying to finish the uh, <clears throat> design for the shuffleboard table. Uh, the challenge was what the profile was gonna look like on that box and how was I gonna support it and without making it too heavy and too clunky and all that. So uh, this was the design I landed on uh, with that kind of tapered edge this is obviously not a very detailed drawing, but I really just wanted to look at that profile that would go around it. So we got to starting the uh, the playing board, which is two inch maple. And so you can see there's that's uh, eight quarters maple there. And I have a lot of cutoffs like that from different projects we've done over the months and years. And so actually something like this, you know, that's almost like a butcher block is a good way to use up a bunch of those chunks. And so I, I think we ended up using like one board that would have been real good for something else, but used up a lot of like two foot chunks or less. So then we just laid out all of our rips. Uh, we had the table marked how long the playing board would be, uh, which by the way, it was 10 feet long for the playing board. Uh, the overall table is 10 foot six, so gave you a three inch gutter on each side. Uh, we're marking out for dominoes here. You might be thinking like, you know, that's overkill and <laughs> you're probably right. Uh, you could just glue this thing up without dominoes. Uh, but it does, you know, it helps things playing out a little nicer, helps things not, you know, warp and bend in the clamps as much, um, especially if they were bigger dominoes. Uh, they, these are just little guys. But uh, anyways, that's the way we did it and it worked well. I don't know how much worse it would have been if we didn't use it. Um, I've done countertops like butcher blocks without them and they turned out fine too. But uh, we, we basically only glued up so much at a time. Uh, and, and even at the end, I only did half at a time because that's what I could get in my planer. Unfortunately for me, I don't have a planer that's 24 inches wide, which is what the, uh, I think it was 24, maybe it was 22, but it's wider than my 13 or 15 inch planer, whatever that is. So did half at a time. Uh, basically just planed off the glue and and uh top surface and so it, it worked real well it's kind of cool to see that rough rough side go in and the smooth side come out so back to the giant scrabble board mega scrabble board whatever you want to call it i hope this isn't too confusing doing two projects in one but anyways uh it looked good it's a little rough i was hoping for a cleaner cut i don't know if it's just there like that one is was pretty bad, and so I'm showing it. But uh, otherwise, it was really good. It's just just a little rough. So I don't know if it's the limits of their machine, probably. But 
very dirty. Uh, a lot of, I don't know if it's, there's definitely oil, which would clean with mineral spirits, but just a lot of like black, like grit on there that was really uh, kind of a battle to get off. Um, that's, I think that's Trey working on it there and he got it so far and that part looks really good. I did that part and then Trey was doing the rest and he got it a pretty good ways. And then I came back and scrubbed on it for a couple more hours. Uh, cause I was going to paint it black and I really wanted a clean surface for the paint to bond to. So there it is finished, uh, after a lot of sweat there. So here I'm getting my paint booth set up. That's a, I should just do a whole video about all of the things I don't have. Uh, one of those is a good paint booth, but, uh, we make do. So, uh, I have that styrofoam, you know, that's cut for the fans and that's the way we do it. So it works pretty good. It, it's It pulls neg negative pressure and gets the stuff out of there. So I'm painting the back first. Uh, and it's not, a, it's not like a pure black. It's more like a charcoal or something. Uh, and you can see the black or the back of this thing almost had like a polished look before I painted it. And that, that's because, uh, the process of using the plasma cutter just, it creates a slag that kind of hangs down, uh, underneath the board. And so it has to be ground off of there, but it actually kind of looked good. I, I played with the idea of maybe just polishing the front in a similar way, but, uh, in the end, I thought the black might, um, make some of that roughness disappear, um, and, and it did like you, you really had to look at those letters to see that they weren't like nice and perfectly cut. So back to the, uh, maple playing surface here. Uh, now I'm using the big domino, uh, and I'm going to put the two sides together. So these are probably 12 or 14 millimeter dominoes by hundred or 120. So these are big ones. Um, and so that'll help line everything up and also help keep it from warping on itself if I get the clamps um, too tight or something. It, it helps. It won't stop you from that. If, you're, if you just are binding that thing, it'll still bend. But the dominoes help. Putting a little bit of wood glue in all of the uh, domino holes before I put the dominoes in them. I usually cut the width on those slightly big. Um, that way... If I put too much glue in, uh, I've been there where it's like the hydraulic pressure. You just can't put that domino in far enough because, uh, like I said, the hydraulic pressure, the glue has nowhere to go. So I'm gluing up the edges, smoothing that out. And then just using a clamp to just kind of pull that in on itself. And then I'll use a whole series of clamps to get it tight. While I had that uh, paint still loaded up in the gun, I went ahead and hit this plywood quick. Um, you'll see this, this, the plywood is, um, one side of that plywood is exposed on the bottom of the table. And so I just wanted anything on the bottom of the table just to be black and just kind of go away. Uh, and then beyond, uh, is these two by fours. And we had earlier, we had notched these out and, uh, they will, uh, they're made to go around the tube steel that runs the length of the table. So you'll see that in a little bit too, but, uh, I took my chance and, and got them painted quick while I had the gun going. The Scrabble letters are made out of uh, maple. So that's a one by eight that was planed down to half inch. And the machine is running a program I wrote to uh, bore out holes for the batteries. So those uh, are three eighths by I think just sixteenth of an inch batteries. Um, it takes 200 of them because there's a hundred letters in a in a scrabble set and i put two on each so uh etched out the letters this was pretty simple i didn't want to cut them out yet though i wanted to be able to paint them and sand them as one and so i i cut out the individual tiles later but so right now it's just etching out the letters and the you know score numbers okay it's saturday we are one week seven days from today is the auction and I finally getting a good start on this stuff. So uh, there's the top for the shuffleboard, uh, which is pretty great. There's there's still like a little ledge in the middle and it's, it's too big for my planer. Since it won't fit in my planer, I think I'm gonna stick it on the CNC and try and surface it that way, uh, which is actually too long for the CNC, but I can flip it around and do half at a time. Uh, Finally getting going on these Scrabble letters. Uh, 
can't see them very good from there but we got one board done another one to go uh had some issues with the bit there maybe i already described it to you uh, and then way over here well i'll just walk over there over here i have scrabble board two coats of paint front and back i'll probably do another coat on the front tonight and then i've got the plywood bottom and the two by fours which is part of the framing for the bottom of the shuffleboard table and there's the tube steel that'll go through those notches. So <clears throat> all of the components, all the pieces are coming together, like a little factory here. And then pretty soon we'll get to start putting stuff together and that'll be exciting. I don't know about this design. I looked online uh, extensively at shuffleboard tables and I don't know. I just, the designs were either like kind of low level do it yourself like just clunky things or like ultra modern and i would need a lot more time to do it so kind of came up with my own design and i think it'll be good we'll see i for some reason i always do things differently i would just i think to myself oh i can do it better we can do it better than that we'll have better design than that this will be great i don't know why they did it that way uh and like maybe maybe like five percent of the time that's genius and i don't know 60 percent of the time it probably doesn't matter it's just a different way of doing it and then what's left 35 percent of the time it's maybe a mistake but i don't know we'll see on this one uh all the stuff's coming in the legs came in i'm getting different legs a lot going on but it's coming together don't worry i'm managing it fine we'll get there we're gonna get there this video would not have been posted if i didn't build something all right, so painting the Scrabble tiles quick, uh, pretty simple. What I will say about this is that I'm using a heavy bodied acrylic paint, um, Golden Brand, which is, so it's like uh, legit, it's the good stuff for like painting on canvas, which I do sometimes when I have time, which is like never. Uh, but I thought it would work good in this application because it is thick body, it's not thin and cheap, so it's not gonna seep into the grain because I have to come back over that and sand off everything that is not in the recessed part and so if it was kind of thick and just on top it would come off easy uh, and it did it worked good oh that maple top was so heavy to move around by myself uh okay so the um, it's fully assembled and so what i need to do now is clean up the edges it's made a little big so i can do this and so i'm going to take a track saw and cut off all four sides and then we're going to do a final surfacing with the cnc so uh, the the track is not long enough for the board. The board, by the way, is 10 feet long, uh, and overall the table will be 10 foot six, so it has a three inch gutter. So just cutting a thin strip off the side. It's especially uh, important with this butcher block type assembly where you hit like down the long side, you have multiple pieces making up that edge. So those butt joints just need to be cleaned up. So now I'm just uh, running a surfacing bit and just uh, cleaning cleaning that up it was it was very good but just where the two halves came together was slightly imperfect so just running that through one more time i got this thing all planed down i used the uh, cnc to plane it down with a surfacing bit and uh which i knew would work it's a little weird because it's too long for the table and i have to had to move it around but it worked uh so that looks really good um to the part that makes me really nervous i got to uh the scoring lines and the numbers not too big a deal but then i got to do the you and i logo in the middle of it um and i'm a little nervous about that i it's something that i would normally test out especially for like an expensive thing like this but i just got to keep going so i'll watch it and stop the program if i need to but uh so yeah we're gonna get going on that super exciting um the the uh, other project that we're doing in tandem here the scrabble board the letters are coming good um there's a little more sanding to do on the, a lot more on those a little more on those but uh, those are the ones that are sanded good look awesome so very cool all right let's see what the machine does i had my finger on this cancel um button and i had to stop it right away because it was struggling i could hear it struggling 
because my feed rate was too fast for a hard maple like this. But uh, after I adjusted the program, it went pretty smooth. And there's burn marks like in that trough, but it didn't matter because it was going to be black epoxy in there, so you'd never see it. And so here's just the logo in the middle, carving that out. If I would have had more time, I would have probably done that in a multi-pour. So in other words, I would have poured like a base color and then... After that epoxy cured, then I would have poured it, and then I would have CNC'd out the next color and poured that and so on. Uh, and that might have been cool, but actually, you know, just the one color with the wood, it, kind of a classy look too. Sometimes you can overdo all the colors and stuff. Just because you can do it doesn't always mean that you should do it. So in the end, I really like the way this worked out. So I was really happy with this, uh, the way that was carved in. It, it looked really good. And so after I had the scoring lines and logo done, then I had to uh, turn it around and run the program again to put the scoring lines on the other side. I actually had trouble online trying to find what the actual dimensions of these scoring lines should be. And I think it's because the table size varies so much. In the end, I guessed. I uh, routered a nice uh, radius on it. It's probably like a 3 8 uh, Seemed appropriate from what I had seen before of other boards. So just put that on all four sides quick. That's a simple thing to do. Uh, and then had a bunch of sanding to do. I don't think I showed the sanding, but I did sand it extensively too. I was really happy with this. I At this point, I was thinking this looks really good. So... Uh, it's kind of mine to screw up with the epoxy. But I, I've done a decent amount of epoxy by now, so I, I have a pretty good confidence level when it comes to epoxy. Maybe maybe a higher confidence level than I should have, but I felt pretty good about it. I, really what I was a little nervous about was the uh, the whole frame and, and, and making sure that that looked good and was... was sturdy and worked good too because it's a lot of weight going on this thing and people you know they lean against the edge the end of it you know and you just don't want the legs to rack and for the thing to fall that way uh anyways i had a lot of concerns about the design so what i'm doing now is i just put some um black powder in there to dye the epoxy and so i've got a two-part mix there I think I'm using this Art Pro, which I had some of that around because the only other thing I had was either tabletop or like the really deep pour X kind. And so this was kind of the only epoxy I had that would work good for like a quarter inch uh, pour. So this is, this is pretty tricky. So um, I have these, what do you call that? Something like a injector, like a baster syringe maybe is the word, uh, and those work really good for this. That's kind of a bigger one, and then for the smaller details, then I have to use a really tiny one. Better to be a little surgical with uh, applying the epoxy than to clean up a mess. Uh, so then it's just down to torching the bubbles, and man, I was there for probably another hour or two. I think it was like one in the morning before I got out of there. It was a really late, really late night, late weekend, marathon of a weekend for me, but it looked good. Uh, so here I'm just cutting out the tiles. I wanted to leave them together for all the sanding and stuff, but it was time. All right, it's go time. Shuffleboard tables here. Got a couple cameras set up. Uh, so we did the epoxy inlay last night. We being me, but you were there in spirit, I guess. Uh, and so now I'm going to do the top coat, which I am using Moss moss epoxy um moss epoxy top coat and i don't know if that's the best but i like saying it moss epoxy sounds like i don't know what it sounds like it sounds like spanish anyways uh so we're gonna film this hope i got enough i actually just did the calculations and i have like maybe just enough and so i thought two gallons would be plenty, but I guess I've never done anything this big with epoxy. So, uh, uh, 
I just get nervous about this stuff. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna record it and uh, let's give it a shot here. So here's my tabletop epoxy, which is, you know, made for like an eighth inch coat or less. It's a two part deal. So just pouring both of them in there. Um, I had said that it was gonna be close and I thought it was gonna be close, but I actually ended up having plenty. It was no big deal. So just getting it all mixed up, which activates everything, gets the heat going, gets the bubbles going. Just like all the people that I've, I, I've watched on YouTube have told me to do, um, I kind of pour it in an S and then I start spreading it out. And then I'll, I'll get the sides nice and coated before I really break the edge and let it run over just because that's what people have told me to do. So kind of getting used to some of that, but there's guys that have done a lot more of this than me for sure. But I have had really good luck. Usually a lot of the epoxy I've done has turned out really good. Yeah, I got I got a little, um, I think, sick of using that little spreader. I can just go faster with my hands because you can just dive in and do it. It'll it'll level out. Had plenty, so why not put a little bit more on? Probably what I probably I should have leveled that, but um, like for the inlays, I did level it. You have to level it, but. The tabletop I don't think is that big a deal. It all just runs off the edge anyways. So just going over it and over it, just kind of smoothing everything out without really just lightly kind of tipping it. Um, I don't want to just push all the product, all the epoxy off. Oh, it's the same torch that I use for my <laughs> creme brulee, by the way. That's dumb. I don't know why I put that in there. It's in there now, though. All right, so here, here it's poured. Uh, gosh, that like if you want a, like a glass-like finish, epoxy is the deal. Here I'm getting that tube steel laid out, and then that two by four framing, just kind of getting that set up. That's the bottom. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, so here I'm doing the glue up for the uh, sides of the table, which is in walnut. It's always a challenge to clamp these odd profiles or mitered pieces together. So, uh, you know, we, we come up with different blocks and stuff. I'll, I'll tell more about that in a minute. And then you can see on the, on the table here, there's one that we already did. All right, so I've been working on the table that'll be holding that. And so this is my design here. Uh, it's basically just plywood then i've got inch and a half tube steel running through it and then i rip down i rip down two by four so instead of three and a half these are only two and a half inches tall but they're notched to go around that tube steel so the tube steel runs all the way through and uh and so the tube steel will be bolted through or not bolted but lagged through the plywood into that two inch maple so the combination of that tube steel and the maple will be uh, very, very strong and uh, they will work in tandem. The, the steel will help keep the uh, maple from ever warping and things like that. Uh, although you shouldn't have much problem with that uh, in this situation, but uh, so that'll be bolted, you know, obviously be flipped over and then we're gonna bolt through there. I've been drilling holes through the steel where the bolts will go. And so uh, then the plywood here is runs a quarter inch farther than the two by four all the way around. And the purpose of that is go over here. So I'm gonna wrap this thing in walnut. So the, the box around it, uh, gutter, whatever you wanna call it, will have these walnut sides like this. And so um, it'll be like, this is the profile, looking at it straight on. And then, um, or the plywood will go in here. We'll be able to fasten that. And then there'll be two by fours dying into that every so often. And so it'll give us a real good uh, bearing to keep this straight and to fasten it. Shouldn't be hard. Um, let's see. So <clears throat> this is a little tricky to make 
this profile with that slant on it like that. Um, it's not really tricky to cut. It's actually tricky to put, put together. And uh, so what we did, we made these, and I'll show you how that works. So those, if you can see that, just slide right over that profile nice and tight, and then you can clamp that instead of the board and it holds that joint perfectly good. Um, because if you didn't have this board in here and you're just pulling on this, pushing on this, it would probably separate down here. Um, I've been there many times where um, this type of thing or type of angle, it's just a nightmare. You're trying to all kinds of different ways to clamp it. So uh, that was actually a really good solution. I, I have the the perk of having a CNC machine here. So when we have that idea, which we actually thought of last minute, Mark thought of that. And then I went and wrote a program to, to cut them out. And so we had some scrap plywood. And so it went from drawing it on a piece of paper, like, Hey, this might work, uh, to 10 minutes later having, um, a dozen of these and they worked really awesome. So, uh, a little tip. That's good. Um, all right, I guess that's it for now. I need to I need to finish putting that together, flip it over. Um, oh, I could show you the Scrabble letters. So here's some stacks of letters. There's a hundred of these suckers, hundred of these in a set. And uh, they feel real nice. They're solid maple, plain down to half inch. Uh, etched them in there like very shallow but um then painted and sanded anyways but we put these magnets in the in the back of them so they'll stick to the board just like that so the board's done it's inside but anyways so uh those are cut out and then i've got another board way over there on the cnc that i need to cut out and uh that's the second time i've done that one i screwed that one up the first time but I won't bother you with the details of that. <clears throat> Just, anyways, uh, okay. It is Tuesday night and these things need to be delivered Friday and then Saturday is the auction. So I'm feeling the pressure to get this stuff done. It's, we're close, but when you still have parts that need to be lacquered, I mean, that's a couple days that that stuff should sit and so on. So. Yeah, nothing like the nothing like the pressure getting done. Using a step bit to make a bigger hole uh, for the whole head of the bolt, and then a smaller bit for the shank of the the uh, lag, I guess. But uh, so they could be recessed inside the tube steel. So there's my boys helping me get it down. So the tube steel, as you can see, is kind of recessed in there too. And at this point, we are ready to put the walnut on. And so. Uh, fit like a glove really awesome so what what i don't show here i don't think at any point is that i did end up putting metal brackets on the like a 90 degree bracket on the end of all those black two by fours and and back screwed it into the walnut so uh that was made it unbelievably strong and because my concern was you know you're when you move the thing you're kind of picking up on the walnut um maybe the two by four also but definitely the walnut and so i wanted everything to kind of act as one and be very solid. What you're seeing here is just a dry fit. I actually didn't have the cameras rolling when we fastened it. Uh, so now we're down to sanding. This is, so it's been fastened. It's been back screwed into those brackets. Uh, nail holes at the miters have been filled and now we're doing a final sanding over the whole thing. Incidentally, those legs I just brought, bought on Amazon, um, they were fairly inexpensive, but still heavy duty. So I, originally I was going to make some legs and then I thought, why? Getting close now, uh, getting ready to lacquer. So here's all Scrabble letters laid out doing backs first and everything's masked off here, uh, except the legs it looks like on this. I masked off the plywood underneath because I wanted to be able to glue to that and I like to 
I like to glue to natural wood better than wood that's been lacquered. It, it bonds better. So that's why that was masked off. And so oh, it's just beautiful when you start spraying that walnut. <clears throat> it just looks amazing. No stain needed. Just get it wet. So a little more of the same here, just getting it all sprayed. I had I had etched into the side here a little little credit for who built it. So I'm sure we did um, probably three coats of lacquer on this. The letters might have been less, but that walnut I'm sure we put probably three coats on. And so here I'm doing the felt, and I didn't take much video of this. Uh, and I use this ESO tape, which is like this really high-end um, but amazingly effective tape that acts like glue. Uh, and I use that to put the felt down. And so here's the finished felt. That's, again, something I forgot to put the cameras on for. But uh, I've done a lot of felt, and so uh, that part was uh, fairly simple. All right. So close. Pack is killing me. All right. Leaning over this table and installing the felt. Uh, the good news is I install a lot of acoustical felt for a living and I have a bunch of like extra rolls and scraps and stuff and so uh, I just had some of this around. I usually use thicker stuff but um, this is just quarter inch. I have like half inch and one inch and depends on the pro project but uh, so anyways just use quarter inch uh, fit nice and neat just uh, put it in there with ESO tape and uh, could have glued it that works fine too ESO tape is like double-sided tape that really is glue too like you peel it back and it just it sticks to you it's like legit stuff but super expensive but i had some of that left too okay so we're gonna spin around here we will get that placed in there momentarily uh the bolts that come up through the bottom of the table i'm gonna cut out uh where they go through the felt so I'm not as worried. If it was fabric, I'd be a little more worried about a bit or a screw catching it and just like pulling a thread and screwing up what I did. Um, felt is a little more not like fabric or not like carpet. So it shouldn't be a problem, but I'm going to do it just in case. So I'm going to cut out those little holes where the bolts, the lags will come up through into the bottom of the maple. And uh, these are done. I'm way, I'm going to let them cure for as long as possible before I put them in that rack but lacquer is I'm sure they're dry now so I, all in all this really happy with it looks awesome and we'll put the board in there and I think that'll look fantastic too maybe the only thing that's not optimal about it is um I have like three inches or less all the way around so like the gutter space is like two or three inches three inches on the side two on the end I think um Maybe more than that, two and a half, I think. It's big enough that the puck can drop, but it's not real. Probably should have a little more space. We'll find out when we start, when we play out, mess around on a little bit. Uh, okay, yeah. It's been a bit of a marathon here last week getting these two projects done. Not even a week. But we're almost there. I'm excited. Okay, stick around to the end and, and uh, see what somebody pays for these. Um, if nobody buys them, I won't post this video maybe or I won't talk about the auction but I think somebody will buy them they're pretty cool all right over and out roughly cut out the holes where those lags will come up through um, roughly because you won't see them anyways and then we uh, place the table and lagged it down and so this is pretty close to finished product I think it's just missing the scoring abacus on the side so Took a couple pictures, sent it to the college to let them know that, yes, I really did make something, and it'll be there soon. Uh, last thing I did for the Scrabble board was make these trays. This was a really good design because it was really fast and easy to make. All right, we were fortunate enough to uh, bring in a local model to do the first puck slide. Her name, what's your name, ma'am? Robin. Robin is her name. And so I'm going to bring the camera around, and we'll see how she does. You might want to, like, just... Move it an inch or two just to kind of get a feel for it. Okay. Does it feel good? Yeah. Slippery? Slippery. You ready? Yeah. But, I mean, it's not going to take much. You want to get it in one? Three, is the, three best, is the best. But okay. that's the hardest. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. 
Now, it's... I'm not a professional. No, 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 but the table isn't set up, I should probably say. Like, it's not level. Mm. But I think we can tell that it did slide. <laughs> Let's try again. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, shoot. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for trying that out for us. Yep. So here we go. Here we are delivering it to the McLeod Center, which is uh, where they play basketball. It's where the event was being held. Uh, it's just so good to be done and to, you know, present something that I'm proud of. So good moment. Uh, so this was sitting down there for the live auction. The Scrabble game was up top with the silent auction stuff. And we kind of had it on display there, did some fun stuff. Um, I didn't show up, but I made this cool tray out of solid maple. Uh, life is more fun when you play games. I etched into it. Uh, so we are, at this point, we are ready for the event. So I attended the event, which was a blast. But what I didn't know is that when they got to the shuffleboard table, they were going to say, hey, the fabricator of the table is there. And let's have him say a few words about it. And uh, I, that is not my forte. I don't like that kind of thing. But uh, it was fine. I told about the table a little bit and made a couple jokes. Pops are included. If it goes over a certain value, I'll wax it and deliver it. I took a little video of the auction, but you can't really hear it anyway, so I'll just tell you that it uh, went up to $7,100, $7,100. Yeah. Last stairs I just came up. Anyways, final up price on the Scrabble and the silent auction was $1,250, so that's good. And the shuffleboard went for $7,100, $7,100. And actually, there's another bidder, and now we're going to make a second one. So, <clears throat> sold two of them for 7100 So, uh, anyways, the event's over. That's what it went for. Thanks for watching.